Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you, our members from both the Edge Seventh-day Adventist Church in Cambridge, Seventh-day Adventist Church, and our friends from all around the world, and also family members who are out there stuck at home and taking the time to uh, check in with us and share this spiritual moment together. So happy that uh, God allowed us to get through another week and arrive on the Sabbath. Sabbath is always a special time for us. Uh, and now that we are quarantined and that we have to be home and that uh, we have to keep social distancing, it is even more so important for us as church members throughout the world to connect with one another, to pray with one another, to, to know that we are not alone. In the past, we didn't have this uh, technology, we didn't have these opportunities, but uh, in our day and age, we have this great opportunity and this uh, technology that allows us to connect and, and we should not take it for granted. What a great opportunity that God has given us to use technology in a way to, that it becomes a blessing blessing to his church, blessing to the members. Of course, we can use it uh, as a curse and we can use it for negative things and for wasting a lot of precious time, but it is important for us to redeem uh, technology and use it for, for good things. I don't know where you're watching us from, but you do have an opportunity to leave us some comments and we always enjoy your comments. So please make sure that you uh, begin to leave us some comments so that we can uh, know where you are watching from. Uh, if you're in a different state other than Minnesota, please uh, let us know where you're at. Uh, if you our home, uh, let us know that. If you have prayer requests, also please let us know that you have prayer requests in the comments below. And just give us encouragement, give us some love. We cannot hug one another in Christian love, but at least we can encourage one another through our words. And so please uh, Take the time to leave some love. Take the time to let us know how it sounds. Uh, if if you don't, if it's not sounding right, if if it's too bright, uh, then let us know, and we will try to adjust uh, as we can. Otherwise, we are so happy to have you with us here in the studio, <laughs> also known as home also known as The Office at Home. Uh, we are glad that you could join us this Sabbath. We have a special uh, message from God for, for all of us. And I, and I pray and I hope that you are encouraged. I want to remind all of you, not just our members, but all of you Christians out there that uh, that it's very important for us not to forget to support our churches. Yesterday, we were talking to our neighbors uh, from a safe distance, but we were talking to our neighbors. They go to a Sunday church, and we were talking about how uh, this whole virus has interfered with, with uh, church life. And they were telling us that their church has not been live streaming and how lonely they felt and, and how they missed it, missed the, the programs. And we began to talk about how uh, perhaps this distancing and this, this fact that we are not at church together, well, it could have a negative effect on churches. I hope it doesn't, 
I hope that uh, Christians the world over realize the importance of continuing to support their churches financially, continue to uh, send in your offering and your tithe, which helps us to be on the air and helps our churches because we still have mortgages to pay and we still have utilities to pay even though we are not physically at the building. And so please, wherever you are, uh, do take the time to give to your churches. Give to the church of God. Give to give back to God uh, a thankful offering. Give your tithe. Don't stop giving it. Uh, if you are a Seventh-day Adventist, you know that you can go uh, on AdventistGiving.org and you can register or simply you can give a one-time payment uh, but that is not all. There are certain offerings like for our church, the Edge Church, and for Cambridge. Other, there are certain offerings that you cannot give online. Like if at the Edge we have constituency offering. And uh, we know that there's going to be a lot of families out there hurting in need of cash because uh, they lost employment, because they they were not able to work as much and so we want to be ready to support as many families as we can so if what you, if the fund that you want to give to is not available online and if you are a member of the edge or a friend of the edge seventh day adventist church then uh, send us a check through the mail to our address uh, our own Dr. Lehman has uh, volunteered to go to church and check the mail and pick up those funds, those envelopes, and take them to, to his wife, Joan, who is the assistant treasurer for our church. You can do the same for Cambridge, and I assume that you can do the same for other churches if you want to give perhaps to uh, children's ministries or uh, a certain department within the church that you cannot find it online make sure that you send your check uh, your money order uh, made out to the church's name to the church's address so that we can continue to support all the ministries of the church very well let us pray then so that we can begin our message today. I'm simply going to bow my head because there's not a lot of room to kneel here, uh, but I invite you to join me in prayer, prayer wherever you are. Uh, if you're at home or at work or uh, out in nature, please uh, let's have prayer. Our Father, we are so thankful for the Sabbath, which is an opportunity to drop all of our cares behind, to uh, concentrate on you, to dedicate time to, uh, for our relationship with you as our Father, as our friend, with Jesus, our brother, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that you are interested in us and that you never uh, take a break and that you never grow weary of helping us. Lord, today we come to you asking you to lead us uh, through this study. Help us to understand the message, which is a very simple message and yet a very important message. I pray for all of our friends, our members, fam family members out there who are tuned in and who perhaps later on will tune in and, and watch this, this program. May you bless them each according to your loving understanding and wisdom. And as we read, Father, may it be your words, your thoughts that are understood by all and not mine. For we ask these things believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
yesterday my wife and I decided to to that we needed a break we decided that we needed some therapy uh, and the best type of therapy there is out there uh, at least for us our favorite type of therapy is nature therapy and so we packed our car we got our food we got our hiking boots and shoes we we had changes of clothes we got our water bottles and our backpacks and we got our camera equipment and our tripod and we just loaded everything into one of our cars and we began to drive to our happy place our happy place being the north shore in minnesota and we drove about two and a half hours we passed duluth and we kept on going we were not necessarily uh, we didn't necessarily have a specific plan but we were hoping to hit a few of our favorite places hopefully not find a lot of people so that we could keep safe social distancing and as we were driving all of a sudden the the air pressure gauge came on the light came on and i noticed it and i told my wife kara i think we are losing the air in one of our tires and we kept on driving and then i began to hear some noise coming from the back and i said to my wife i think it's a i think it's we need to pull over and I need to check those tires and so I pulled over there was not a lot of room to pull over on the highway uh, but thankfully there was not a lot of traffic and I got out the two tires on the driver's side were perfectly fine and as I uh, made my way around the back of the car I saw the back tire on the passenger side was almost completely flat I have to confess that I had a fraction of a second uh, those uh, thoughts of oh Lord why but then I decided to release it in God's hands and said Lord please help us I got back in the car and I told my wife we have a flat tire and we're gonna have to turn around and go back to Duluth and we made a u-turn and and i could hear the tire i knew that it was now pretty much completely flat and all of a sudden we see this clearing on the side of the road perfect clearing it's not it was not a driveway it was just the perfect flat clearing and we pulled in there there was enough room away from the highway uh, sure enough the tire was completely flat uh, I have to confess and I know that there are some men out there who will cringe when they hear this I had not checked to see if we had a spare prior to this point I didn't even know if we had a car jack I didn't know if we had anything under the trunk uh, space where you usually keep the spare and so I was hoping that I would find everything that we needed to change the tire and lo and behold I did I lifted it up and I realized that we had a brand new spare tire never been used uh, perfectly inflated we had the jack we had everything there and so we proceeded to change the tire and then we headed back to Duluth we went to discount tires we ended up having to get two tires because our uh, blowout was due to two nails that had gone into the tire and completely damaged uh, the tire and so someone could say well what a negative way to uh, ruin your your day off your perfect day but the truth is that throughout this whole ordeal both my wife and I experienced peace we were at peace we were not upset 
we didn't feel that this was in any way a detraction or something that was ruining our day. In fact, we were talking about the fact that perhaps this was God's way of uh, letting us know you needed some tires. And uh, instead of getting them here in the cities where coronavirus is uh, uh, pretty bad, uh, we were in Duluth, where in that area it's not as bad. And, and so we, we were not upset whatsoever. We felt at peace. Uh, the work was done pretty quickly and we were able to enjoy the rest of the day. We drove back in the direction of home, went to one of our favorite state parks, small state park, but we love it nonetheless, Banning State Park. And we were able to enjoy a wonderful afternoon. It was warm. It was beautiful. We took uh, a trail by the side of the river, a trail that really does not exist, but we followed it. And we came, came up with just beautiful nature, beautiful uh, opportunities to take pictures and to enjoy nature by ourselves, mostly and we got some good exercise in the process. I felt that this perfectly illustrates uh, the sermon that I was working on for today. That even amid trials and difficulties, we can enjoy God's peace, God's perfect peace. As I was thinking about that uh, early this morning, I got up early this morning, so I was thinking about it, this, the following uh, passage came to mind and I would like you to go there with me. We are going to the book of Isaiah, chapter 26. The book of Isaiah, major prophet Isaiah, chapter 26. And we are going to be reading verse 3. Now, I usually, not usually, always preach from the New American Standard Bible. However, I like to read this out of the New King James Version instead because I like the wording and the order of the wording in the New King James better. So, out of the New King King James Version, I read, Isaiah 26, 3, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts you. As beautiful as this passage is, in the English translation we missed, a little something. If we go to the Hebrew, which we will not go to the Hebrew, but if you went to the Hebrew, you realize that in the Hebrew it reads something like this. You will keep him in shalom, shalom. In other words, you will keep him in peace, peace. And so this repetition of the word peace, peace, is perfect peace. That's why the translators decide to translate it as perfect, you know, because it's, it's like uh, emphasizing the peace. You, God will, will keep you in perfect, in complete, in sound peace. Those whose minds are stayed on him. What a beautiful uh, thought for us that God promises to keep us in his perfect peace, peace. And, uh, and this, this is perfect because this is what we are talking about today. We're talking about the perfect peace of God. Peace, perfect peace. Peace. 
Now we're going to go to the New Testament, to the Gospel of John, but before we get there, I want to tell you what's going on here in the Gospel of John, chapter 14. If you have your Bibles, you can go to Gospel of John, chapter 14. And what is going on here is that uh, Jesus is getting to the end of his earthly ministry. And, and he knows what is going to happen. After all, he is Jesus. He is the Son of God. He is God in the flesh. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of and the end. He is the Creator. He is well aware of the circumstances of life. And he knew what was awaiting his disciples. And as he is getting to the end of his earthly ministry, he knew that uh, the things that would happen next would be very trying for his followers. They would be very uh, heart-wrenching for them. They would not understand them correctly until later. And so Jesus is trying to encourage them and to comfort them. And he does it by saying the following. Uh, we are in the Gospel of John chapter 14. We're going to simply read out of verse 27. Now, later on during the Sabbath, if you haven't read this before or if it's been a while since you've read chapter 14, I would encourage you to, to read it and to reacquaint yourself with the whole message of chapter 14 and on because this whole uh, section of the Gospel of John is, is very beautiful and, and the encouragement that you will find there will surely help you. However, because of time, we will simply concentrate in verse 27 for the rest of the message. And uh, let me read the whole passage first. The passage, once again, this time I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. If you have a different version, it'll read slightly different, but it's the same message. It's either my peace or peace, I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Beautiful passage. Beautiful passage. Let's take it one step at a time. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Now, I know that this is beautiful, but someone out there might be thinking because of their personal experience because there's people out there who have had just really negative events in their lives there's people out there right now struggling to live because they're infected with coronavirus there's people struggling to breathe in hospitals all over the united states and the world fearing what comes next knowing that thousands of people have died because of this virus, knowing that, that medical supplies are, are in shortage. And so someone out there might read this and say, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Uh, Jesus, I know the rest of the story. I have read the New Testament. I know how the story ended. I know, Jesus, that, that you were uh, betrayed by one of your disciples. I know that as you were betrayed, all of your disciples just fled and left you alone. I know that another of your disciples denied you. I know that, that uh, they were afraid and that you were uh, tried and you were found guilty and you were beaten and you were crucified. That, Perhaps somebody would say, does not sound 
like peace. How can you say to your disciples, peace I leave with you, and then everything just breaks, and everything goes wrong, and, and you end up on a cross? And after your resurrection, yes, even before you appear to the twelve, were, were the disciples at peace? No, they were fearful and doubtful and confused, and they were grieving, and they were perplexed, and they had more questions than answers. And so somebody might say, how can you say, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, when there was no peace in their hearts? And later on, we know that things get a little better. You, you introduce yourself back to them. You explain the scriptures to them. Then you ascend into heaven. And then Pentecost comes and the Holy Spirit is poured upon the disciples. Thousands of people are converted. And yet, after that, Stephen is martyred. He is stoned to death by evil people that hate him. And then persecution breaks out and, and people, all the Christians flee for, for their lives. Where is the peace that you promise? And perhaps the same person could say, and I look around in our world and I don't see any peace. I look around in our world and what I see is violence and what I see is wars and rumors of wars. And what I see is uh, political Leaders who are greedy and hate and uh, bigotry and resentment. I do not find peace in the world. Well, that is true. But the clue to what Jesus was promising his disciples is within the verse. The clue is within, within the verse. And let's keep on reading. After he says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. He says, Not as the world gives do I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. You see, the peace that Jesus promised is not the same peace that this world wants or that this world is pursuing. If you are, are looking for, for peace as uh, a state of security and order among your communities, if you are looking for peace as a uh, a state of mutual concord between governments, between countries of the world. If you are thinking of peace as freedom from civil disturbance, then you are in for disappointment. Because you will not find that type of peace in this world. You look around and what you find is people killing each other. You find uh, school shootings. You find uh, people going on, on uh, mass homicides. You find uh, still children being kidnapped and killed. You find uh, prostitution, girls taken, kidnapped, and, and put into prostitution. You don't find the type of peace that the world is seeking. But that's not the type of peace that Jesus was talking about here. So what type of peace was Jesus referring to? Let's keep on reading. After he says that it's not as the world gives, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled nor let it be fearful. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Do you get it? Jesus knew how bad things were going to get. He knew everything. 
even from that point in time, he knew that that you know how things are going were going to happen. He knew who was going to betray him. He knew who was going to deny him. He knew that his disciples would be perplexed and scared. He knew that they that Stephen was going to be stoned to death. He knew that his his church, his early church, was going to be persecuted. He knew all of that. But the peace that Jesus promised is not dependent on life circumstances, but is dependent on your relationship with Jesus. The peace that he was promising, the peace that he said, my peace I live with you. This peace I give to you does not depend on what is going on around you. Because after all, Jesus himself said, uh, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We know that things are going to get uh, go from bad to worse. We we know that there's going to be pestilence. We know that there's supposed to be things like are happening today in our world. Viruses. We know that a lot of people were going to die. We know about the wars and the rumors of wars and so so we know that the peace that Jesus was talking about this this peace prior to his coming was not going to be world peace but it was going to be a peace within us there's a passage in the book the acts of the apostles page 84 that I like to read for you because I think that it's going to uh, help us to to understand this a lot better. Acts of the Apostles, page 84, and it reads like this. This peace is not the peace that comes through conformity with the world, to the world. Christ never purchased peace by compromise with evil. Listen to this. The peace that Christ left his disciples is internal rather than external. Do you understand it? The peace that, that Christ was promising his disciples right here. This peace that he said, I will leave with you, was not dependent on external circumstances, was dependent on internal circumstances. Where your heart is. If you are right with God, if you have accepted Christ as your personal savior, if you are following him, if you are spending time in prayer and the study of the word of God, the Bible, if you are following after him, if you are praying for the Holy Spirit's outpouring, if you are confessing your sins daily, then it doesn't matter how crazy the world might be you can still have perfect peace because he is within you you see the peace that he promise promises to us is not world peace although one day when jesus comes when he establishes his kingdom on this earth we will enjoy that kind of peace but in the meantime we can enjoy a perfect peace within us a peace peace within us and the only thing we have to do is to trust him to know him to follow him it has nothing to do with the conditions of this world but everything to do 
with the conditions of our heart. I believe that the experience of Horatio G. Spafford is a perfect illustration of this piece. This piece that you and I need. This piece that, that can truly make a world of difference. You see, Horatio Spafford uh, was 43 years old. He was a businessman. And he suffered great loss in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. And this only added to his woes and to his grief because him and, and his wife were already suffering great grief because they had lost their son previous to the fire. And now he was suffering because of the fire. And so he decided perhaps it's time for us as a family to take a break. Perhaps it's time for us to take a vacation. And why not go to uh, England and listen to our great friend Dwight L. Moody, the great and famous evangelist who was going to be holding some evangelistic meetings there. And so uh, Mr. Spafford take, took his wife and his four daughters, took him to the harbor, put him on a ship, and they sailed towards Europe, going to England. However, as they were traveling, as they were in the Atlantic Ocean, a iron sailing vessel ran right into the ship where his wife and his four daughters were. It happened so fast that in 12 minutes, their ship, the ship of his wife and, and daughter, sank to the bottom. 226 people perished, including Spafford's four daughters. The only one from the family that survived was his wife. And, and when they finally uh, brought the survivors to land in Wales, England, his wife cabled him a very short message that said, saved alone. When Mr. Spafford heard that, he, he, he left. But the next ticket to go and be with his wife and comfort her. Now they had lost their four daughters and their son. And as he was traveling, as he was crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the captain of his ship pointed to the place where he thought that his daughters had perished where the ship got sunk. And that night, Horatio, as he was alone in his cabin, he penned the following words which have brought so much comfort to so many of us. When peace, like a river, attended my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. My friends, that is the peace that Jesus offers us. It's not the peace that it's based on the circumstances of life because the circumstances of our lives can be disastrous. We can experience calamity. We can experience even death within the family. But in spite of this, we can still experience God's peace. It's a peace that the world cannot know. It's a peace, peace. A perfect peace. Internal rather 
than external. And it is a peace that God desires to give you today. And it only takes for us to accept it. It only takes for us to open our hearts to Jesus and to allow him to come in. And then as we confess our sins, as we accept him as Savior, perhaps as we re recommit our lives to him, then we can begin to experience the peace that Jesus promised. A peace that is internal rather than external. A peace that is perfect. A peace that goes uh, far above the circumstances of this life. With that type of peace, we can, we can uh, face coronavirus or any virus. We can even stare death in the face and not be shaken. Would you like this type of peace, my brother? Would you like to experience this type of peace, my sister? I hope your answer is yes. And I invite you to pray with me once again as we close and as we ask God to grant us his perfect peace. Let us pray. Our Father, we, we need this type of peace. We thank you that your peace surpasses our understanding. It baffles us. We can experience trials and tribulations. We can experience accidents. We can experience loss of life within our families and yet continue to enjoy the peace that comes from you. Perhaps the world will get worse pretty quickly. We know that it will. Father, we are asking you today that you come into our hearts and that you give us your perfect peace, your peace, peace, so that we can face what's ahead, so that our, our fate will not waver, so that we will be able to stand, so that we can get through any trial, temptation, tribulation, persecution, and so that we can be ready for the day when you make all things right. We ask for this believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So happy that you can join us this morning. And so glad that so many of you were able to follow us. I want to remind you that we are also meeting here on Facebook Live on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have a study. We, en uh, we enjoy it and we want you to come and join us and be part of the fellowship and continue to pray for one another. May the Lord richly bless you the rest of this beautiful Sabbath day.